Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're here, and this will be one of the final matches for the Australian Ultimate Championships for 2022. My name is Daniel Clinton. I'm joined by Amy Chang. They've given us the keys again to the commentary box, Amy. They sure have, Daniel. <laughs> this is exciting. It's good to be here, and I'm so excited to see GWS and Fuse play. We haven't seen GWS on the live stream yet, so hopefully this will be an absolute treat for everyone watching at home. Well, this is notionally the fifth and the sixth best team in the country. We're just not sure which is which. They're going to sort that out now over the next 100 minutes. The rain has uh, showed up on cue. And the teams are going to have their final instructions. You can see Simon Wood, coach of the GWS Blaze team. Amy Chang, tell us a little bit about this Blaze side. Yeah, absolutely. I was chatting to some of my Manly teammates in the car this morning and something that really was really interesting that came out was the uh, two Jesses that have that will be playing on this team. Number three, Jess Lynn, and number 69, Jessie Lee. We've seen them play fantastically over this tournament. We're really looking out for their spectacular talent today as well. It will be a great opportunity for them to finish their tournament on a high. Two solid performances back to back now in 2021 and now in 2022 for GWS. They're continuing to build as a club. We move towards the Brisbane Views, who have come back to nationals for the first time in three years. Coached by the super coach himself, Anson Chun. Some excellent names out there. We'll look at uh, Dom Simpson, one of the captains, one of the best in the country. She will be leading the way along with Cat Smith, number 64, a File Tales representative. And Sai Moudwa, number 86, struggling with a hamstring injury earlier. We'll see if she can... Uh, kit up and get going for this match if she can that will be a big inclusion for the Brisbane Fuse so the first pull is up and underway we'll sort this out now and it will be Bowden who picks it up and Dom Simpson in the middle of the field Zygmunt GWS going to bring a zone defense. Simpson. Simpson's going to go with a big forehand. It's a long way out in front. Adrienne Fleming. Just a little bit too far for her. Caught slightly flat-footed. And the rain has showed up perfectly on time. It was fine all this morning here at the fields. And as we start this game, it has decided to, the heavens have decided to open. Carmen, nice underneath throw to Tan. Oh, no, that's a tough bid in there. It's caught well, though. Madison O'Connor hangs on to that with a strong grip. Goes back to Petty Tan. And now the throw around through Nguyen, all the way out to the side. And Hudson, back in the middle to Nguyen. GWS a little bit static down the field. So Nguyen decides with Hud combines with Hudson, keeping that stall count low and manageable. O'Connor, again, heavy pressure. Huge heavy pressure by Ziegman. And O'Connor catches again. Betty Tan. Mortimer. Now they're away. Carmen. She's close. They're in the red zone. GWS settling their offense, trying to get some sort of structure. The rain is pouring. Zeekman can't get there. That's the third time she's been in the contest. Player down on the field. Seems like there's a goal being called. Yeah, it's going to go down as a goal. GWS strike first in this match. That was an exciting point to watch, Daniel. And what I really loved about Fuse at the beginning is they were not afraid to put up some big shots. And as long as they keep showing that energy and that enthusiasm for big shots, big puts in the end zone, I think we're going to have a very exciting match ahead of us. Exciting and somewhat damp. 
hear the rain through the effects mics on our setup here. There is uh, blue skies in the distance. We'll see if they come and visit us or if we're going to see more of the cloud. And there is the coach of the Brisbane Fuse, Anson Chun, sporting the rainbow umbrella. Well, hopefully it will be rainbows and sunshine for this Fuse team. Maybe a tad, a tad bit of manifestation by Anson Chun. And now the sun comes out, but it's still raining. Dom Simpson. Simpson thinking about the big one, decides to go short instead. And now the throw all the way out to Georgia Sullivan. Simpson steps up into the cup. Any long throws covered well. She goes outside in. She's trying to fit it in there to Bowden. Oh, what a perfect throw by Dom Simpson. Excellent weight and control, precision. She's got players on the far side of the field. If she can loop it up and over, she does go up and over. Fuse, so close to scoring. Sullivan will go back to Zygmunt. McInnes rather, and McInnes is going to go to the end zone. Yeah, that's the first goal for Fuse. And a nice spike to finish it up. Fuse not really struggling with that zone defense at all, were they, Amy? They worked it out well and went down the field pretty quick. They did look very comfortable. And it's interesting knowing that GWS and their affiliation with Hills Ultimate, um, the women's Div 2 team, a regular fixture at the Div 2 Nats. And they also play a zone very similar to this zone that GWS is putting up. So it'll be interesting to see if they decide to evolve the zone or put out a different type of zone, or if they'll stick with the Pommy zone, so the four players in a cup around the disc. Used to be all the rage quite a few years ago, did the Pommy or the 1-3-2-1 one, one zone. It's gone out of favour a little bit as teams have kind of played against it so much over the years. They've worked out strategies and tactics and ways to get around it to solve that particular tactical problem. This is Cat Smith with a disc in hand. The fire tail, she'll pull. Sends it. And a pretty good pull it is. And so it will be Pillon. Throws it in the middle of the field to Tara G. Out to Murray. Oh, it's a miscue between two receivers. First turn of the game. Big opportunity now for Fuse. Serena Tam will pick it up. Smith provides the reset, the swinging disc to create some width. It's high, too hot. Smith picks up the scraps. Smith gets up the line. Oh, the push pass. It takes a deflection off the point. And now Smith to the end zone. They've somehow done it. I don't know how. It's Callow with a goal. Cat Smith throwing the assist. Well, Daniel, I was going to say, I'm not sure this zone is going to be very effective against GWS. We're very calm and experienced handlers but hey it's done the trick it's forced turnover well fuse take an early lead in this game yesterday we watched them play the defending champions ellipsis and they got out to a lead on ellipsis now they're Found an early lead in this game, breaking the offense of GWS. That's another pretty good pull. GWS, it's their offense again. 
Out to O'Connor. Goes to Betty Tan. And now GWS got some momentum. Madison O'Connor. O'Connor, the big thrower. She can't get that all the way to the streaming. Rebecca Carmen. I'm not sure if you can pick it up on the camera. We've got some really strange conditions. As the rain is hitting the turf, it's actually turning a little bit to steam. And it's a really peculiar situation here. Smith breaking. An excellent throw by Smith. And now the Hark. The Hark out into space. Tan in the area. Huge block by Betty Tan. And immediately GWS go back the other way. Murray cutting out for O'Connor. The short pass back to Jess Lynn. Carmen taking her time to have a good look at the end zone. It's going to instead reset the disc to Sylvia Wong. Wong goes out to Nguyen. Tan. Some nice timing by this GWS offense. There's one receiver caught the disc. They looked up. They found the next one. So Tan. Tan to throw the goal. She's done it. Jess Lim with the goal. GWS convert their O point. That's a pretty special block there by Betty Tan. She's done very, very well to stop that action. And what I also love about GWS's movement in this point is how fast they're able to get back on offense and catch views a little bit unawares. Conditions are extremely strange at the moment. The wind is actually blowing in the opposite direction that it's done all weekend. We've got full sunlight and pretty substantial rain at the moment. It's peculiar, to say the least. I'm just looking behind the commentator's uh, box, Daniel. We've got a full rainbow behind us we've got a shot of it right now it's really quite beautiful Anson was right he's manifested a rainbow for the team is it a rainbow for Fuse or is it a rainbow for GWS Blaze Simpson signals that she'll take the brick as that pull goes out of bounds on the full Simpson, she brings it in, and Fuse go to work against this GWS zone. Simpson, outside in, that's a pretty good throw to space. It hangs too much though. It hangs far too long in the air. So GWS now with an opportunity. This could be a break back the other way. Oh, what a throw that is. Holy smokes, Jess Lynn has decided to turn it on for the big stage. Yeah, with a throw like that, you can absolutely put up something like that in these conditions where it's ve a very light breeze, but it's got to come down a lot bladier, a lot more speed to get to your receiver. Well, that's interesting. Just as Fuse had created a small opportunity for themselves, GWS come back the other way and break to put the game back on serve. So what an interesting match to start. So that started so great. And another pull that will go out of bounds, so Dom Simpson again will call the brick. See on the screen there as Simpson comes up and immediately goes quick. Oh, what a what a hell of, hell of a good throw there. 
And through Fleming to McGuinness. Bowden is going to provide the reset. It's around her, over the top, finding the player on the near side of the field. Beringer goes back to the middle through Georgiatis. And then Dom Simpson getting involved. Simpson to Bowden. And Bowden, who'd played so well on the stream just a few days ago. Simpson gets up the line. Bowden instead spreads it back to Georgiatis. And now Bowden off the front of the stack. Having a good look at it. She's just going to throw a face ball. Parker Pitts. Well, it's going to go down as a block. And then immediately, G is going to send it to Parker, who'd taken off at a great rate of knots down the field. Carmen gets the reset. Lots of players for GWS behind the disc at the moment. They figure it out, and now G takes control of the offense. G, again, looking for Parker. And that one's blocked. Adrienne Fleming getting the D. So Dom Simpson, Fuse, will go out of their horizontal offense. The first cut is there. It's a low, flat throw. It goes through three, and Ash McGuinness still catches it nearly anyway. Well, we're settling into the arm wrestle now. Tara G. Carmen goes out and G's gonna go to the speedy Carmen. Carmen, Carmen in the end zone, she's got it. Well, GWS now are in front. That's a break of their own. Fuse are gonna call the timeout and bring it in and talk it over. Hanson Chan immediately after seeing that. He wants to have a word with his players. I love the big throws on this, Daniel. I love that GWS immediately got the block, picked it up and threw it long. Some of the riskier shots, they're not coming off, and that's true of both teams. But I think when you're playing such highly established and very skillful teams, it pays to be a little bit risky. It pays to be a little bit creative. I love seeing the big shots in the women's game. There's going to be plenty of it with two high-powered offences. GWS with some big throwers of their own. Tara G, most notable of them. Lise Pillion also loves to sling it. And Dom Simpson, of course, is already approaching this game with intent, shall we say. Malicious intent. She wants fifth. And that would be a great return to the big stage for the Brisbane Fuse. Who, because of COVID, have been away from Nationals for a few years through no fault of their own. The rules being what they are. And of course, GW is sending the speedy Beck Carmen down in the end zone to grab that big shot. That is the right choice. Generally, uh, Beck Carmen is heading in even the general direction of the end zone just to throw it there is going to do enough or she'll do the rest. Fuse their offense now, the pressure drifting towards them. GWS in a good spot in this game, their two breaks. Their first break to level the deficit and now a break to go ahead by one in the context of the game. Six points played, not even 20 minutes gone. That's a pretty good clip. Generally points. Between the points, there's several minutes, normally one to two minutes between points. And if you're moving at a, a clip of some three minutes per point, that means that those points are only taking a minute or so, which is quite quick. It means there's going to be few turns, clean offenses, not many opportunities on D. Bowden. An excellent throw by Simpson for meters. Simpson to bend it around the edge to Georgia Sullivan. He's going to loop it over the top to Simpson. And Simpson bending that disc, throwing it outside in to Ash McGuinness. And McGuinness 
Oh, that's a great throw by McGuinness. It's an excellent grab as well up high. Sabrina Tiong. That's something special. GWS coming down with that poachy zone lock, and I'm not sure it's doing anything to stem the momentum of Fuse. Fuse really able to swing that disc all the way from the left of the field to the right of the field. And as you know, when you are up against a zone defense, the best way to get the best of them is to tire them out, make them work their legs. The old saying is around, over or through. GWS go around. Tiong. Yeah, had to go there. Still had a bit to do. Couldn't let that go too much further. It might have got away with her. Makes the head high layout bid to catch the goal. And Fuse's third. Great dedication from her. Excellent technique as well. Keeping the uh, knees, the knees straight as you bid. You don't want to be folding those knees under you. You can really hurt yourself if the knees dig in the ground. And then the first thing that hits. Oh, there's going to be an offside call by the looks. GWS are going to take the brick. Slight confusion, the rules have recently changed. They work it out. Jess Lynn. She's come out of the blocks at a great rate of knots. Now Hudson. Back in the middle, GWS. Mortimer provides the bouncing pass. And now Jesse Lee. Still no mark on. Hudson asks for the high ball. There's the reset through you. And now Mortimer throws a bladey one. Jesse Lee, so close to scoring. She'll turn it around the corner. Sylvia Wong with the goal. GWS convert their offensive possession. They stay in front. It's very tempting before then. We saw Jesse with the disc and Kathy Yu streaming deep with just one defender. It's so tempting to want to throw that into the end zone and let your receiver play catch. But GWS have done well here to swing the disc, remain patient, and wait for the rest of the team to get into position before playing that disc. We do have an injury update on Saya Mudwa. She is currently in Birkenstocks and Socks. So I. I it looks doubtful that she will play a part in this role, in, in this game rather. Yeah, I don't believe Birkenstocks have released their latest line of cleats, Daniel, so it does look like she'll be sitting out this game. Maybe they need a cross-country version of Birkenstock. Something with a bit of chunky tread. And out there you need, uh, we almost need climbing boots because the field is starting to show the effects of four hard days of play. And Tan. Wow, Tan gives that an awesome rip. McGuinness. Simpson. They go back to match to GWS. And Fuse go to the horizontal. There's a deep cut there. McGuinness is there. He's going to go a little bit shorter. It's too much. It's too far for Reichener. Big opportunity now for GWS. G. G immediately going for Parker. And Parker reads it really well. She catches it. She's all alone. Support arrives in the form of Harriman. Harriman goes back to Parker. Parker bossing the offense at the moment. And then the short pass. GWS break again. That could be a big moment. They're up now. Two breaks in the game. Parker found herself free multiple times during that point. She did very well to find that space and make the most use of her being without a defender. Mandy Parker been doing it for years now. Still as tricky to guard as ever. And Tara G more than willing to trust 
Parker as a receiver. And then in that broken field situation, Amanda Parker just knows what she needs to do. Drives the offense. And a GWS score really before the Hughes defense could find their feet again after the breaking huck. Hughes are down in this one. They need to find something. You don't want to let this game drift too far away from you. You're down two breaks. You need this hold. Tan with another good pull. Simpson will go to the middle of Bowden. And GWS running a switching match defense. McGuinness is going to try and break. And instead, we'll have to go to the open side to Bowden. Playing into the hands, perhaps, a little bit of the defense. And now the Hark. That's a pretty good Hark. Ziegman looking for the free. Georgia Sullivan, who was ghosted in behind the defense, found a soft spot. And that's a point. That's what Fuse needed here. All you need when you're playing against a poachy help set like what GWS were playing is a moment of confusion, a single moment of effective cutting by the offense, and you've really broken through that. And that's what's happened here. They've got a, just coming down the wing, the wing's found herself free and is able to put up that shot to Sullivan. Fuse will be happy with that. If you haven't practiced playing against a poach help, or a poached defensive set. It can be very, very confusing for the offensive team, especially if you haven't identified it, because you'll find, as an offensive team, all your cuts are covered, and there's nothing you can do to get to the disc. A nice moment there between Saimudwa and Harriet Barringer having a bit of a hug on the sideline. Kat Smith to Paul. Ooh, she hasn't quite gotten that one, I don't think. It, no, it will come back. It takes a light, a late turn and stays in the field of play. Mortimer. Nice throw on the inside to Sylvia Wong. Lynn. Lynn is going to go up and over and around. You. You. Thinks for a moment there to send it to Jesse Lee instead. Probably the better option to go back to Mortimer. Bouncing it off, Lynn, Lynn. Lynn is testing. She's testing the waters and it's pretty comfy in there. They dip a toe in the pool and they score their sixth. Number 21, KJ Lingle there doing some running. I have to give her a great shout out for watching the pool come down and deciding to grab it with one hand instead of the usual two hands that you usually see frisbee players catch a pull with and then of course she's made her way into the end zone for the winning score Jesse Lynn as well excellent read of the field spotting that the two help defenders over the top they were both very wide on the field so the space in the middle was open for the throw the outside in forehand taking it away from the defender Coach Simon Wood on screen there. I think he's probably happy how this is going. Hughes really need to hold this offensive possession now. GWS, the opportunity to take half should they get a turn and punch it in. So Murray. Looks like that uh, will go out of bounds. So Dom Simpson again will have another opportunity from the brick mark. Simpson, great servant of this Hughes club. Bowden. Now goes back to McGuinness. Bowden gets up the line. Pinpoint throw to find her. She's a little bit alone at the moment. She's on an island. 
Good throw underneath to Georgiatis. Tiong trying to get free, gets it. And now the cuts. Oh, that's a miscued opportunity there. Saw the cut of Fleming and thought she was going to the corner. Fleming bailed out of the cut. Hughes really found themselves stuck on this close sideline here. They weren't able to swing the disc to get more space on the field. GWS going to immediately set a horizontal stack. Try and create space deeper the downfield cutters. G, humongous thrower. She is going to go. Is she? No. The mark is pretty good, so stops any long throws. And GWS have to work it through hands. And Murray will find Parker, who cut 60 metres to catch that one. Getting good distance now for GWS. G. A wry grin on her face. She wanted that long throw, couldn't find it. Harriman goes back to Murray. G has escaped down the sideline. Pillion getting involved. Now back in the middle to Harriman. Pillion stops, props, and gets on the inside. Carmen will get the reset. Pressure from Sullivan. Ah, oh, Georgie, Sull Sullivan has got it. She's gotten it back for her team. The captain standing up in a big moment. So Simpson picks it up and Fuse got to work out of their vertical stack. Oh, that one just flashing past Harriman. Bowden catches it anyway. The undercut's there for meters. Simpson goes hard to the line, does Simpson. Simpson. Simpson in a massive power position. Sullivan goes. Simpson's going to send it. Georgiatis. Sullivan. Georgiatis is going to be the one who catches it. Big moment. And the big players from Fuse standing up when they needed them most. That was great defense by Georgia Sullivan. She almost looked like she was baiting that one when she was behind Beck Harmon. Beck Harmon looking free for a second. Of course, Georgia Sullivan coming in at the last second just to put enough pressure on it to force that crucial turnover for Fuse. On the replay, we, we might be able to see the cut of Dom Simpson. We'll go back to the turnover, rather. Just a miscued offensive set there. Tiong thinking Fleming was going. Fleming had pulled out. And the block by Sullivan, closing speed, puts enough pressure on Carmen. And there's the catch by Georgiatis for the goal. Probably say on balance, uh, Sullivan had earned the double happiness, as we call it. The, she'd gotten the block. She probably earned the, the score as well. But Georgiatis was there first, so she gets credited with the stat. 7-5. Big moment for Fuse. A break here would take them back and get them within two ahead of half. They will be on offense to start the second half as well, so... An opportunity to close back within one. Should they get this point? Hudson. GWS are going to have to figure out this fuse match defense. Their single coverage all over the field. High stall situation is dropped cold by Betty Tan. Off the hands at knee height. It falls to the turf. That's a turnover. Kat Smith trying to get something going. The pass is there. Fuse. There's a pick and a stack. Holland's going to keep this. Shelby Thompson has to bail out of the line. Pass backwards. Fuse struggling at the moment, trying to get it going. Smith, a nice breaking throw back to Serena Tam. Fuse breaking off that sideline now, so they're up, opening up the offense. Lee all out in front. Callow. Hudson couldn't get it to it. Kalo. Oh, Tam is right on the line. Smith tries to work close. Cuts away to try and drag the defender. The cut up the line. There's going to be a pick call. It's going to come back as Salnikov and Dario will not be credited with this score, I don't think. Tam will have another opportunity at this. 
So this is in. Oh, it gets point blocked. Oh, that's an excellent play by Nguyen. She knew where the throw was going to go, so she got a ju jump on it and slapped it to the ground. Oh, GWS. Out of the diagonal stack they go. Mortimer to create the whip. Now Parker, who's playing so well at the moment. Parker with a high release. Back to Jesse Lee. There's Tan. She catches that one. Oh, look at Parker cutting from the back of the stack. Instead, the reset goes to Hudson. The break to Madison O'Connor. Mo O'Connor! Big throw to Jesse Lee, who's going to catch it. Parker's streaming long. Lee's not going to go to her, I don't think. She doesn't like the look of it. So the stall count will be on O'Connor. Oh, cops the bump. Yeah, it, looked, it looked like uh, Tung Lee had just slipped there as she went to close the distance and ended up clattering into Madison O'Connor. No harm, no foul. Parker and Parker. She's going to try and go around Daria. She does. Lee catches the goal. That's half time. Time for the Oranges. Time for the secret stuff. If they've got it, Fuse need to find some answers. They're down now. And man, it's all to blame for. 35 minutes is all it's taken us to get to half time. This game played at a great rate of knots. Amy Chang, what are your thoughts? Well, what a great block by number 20, Megan Ewan, on the end zone line. She'll be very happy with that. And that's almost a defender's dream, isn't it? You've got your offensive player on the end zone. You're tracking their eyes. You've got a good feeling about where that disc is going. You've got a good feeling about where the cutters are coming from. You stick your hand out at the right moment and she generates a block that GWS really wanted. So props to her, she would have done. She's done very well and she will, she will be very happy with that. Well, we're going to go to halftime. We'll look at some replays of the action from the first half and we'll be back with the conclusion of this fifth, sixth place playoff in the women's division from the Australian Ultimate Championships for 2022.
Welcome back to the second half of this fifth sixth place playoff for the women's division in the Australian Ultimate Championships for 2022. Daniel Clinton back with you, joined by Amy Chang. Amy, what changes do you think Fuse need to make heading into the second half? How do they get back in this game and win this from here? I'm actually liking the gameplay of Fuse, but I have to say yesterday when we were watching one of the live stream games here, I could hear and see Fuse play ellipses from two fields away and I could hear how loud they were and how energetic their sideline is and how much trust they had for each other. And I think that just feels like we're missing some of that spirit in this game. So I think if Fuse can really pull their heads and get around each other, bring that trust, bring that spirit that we saw in their game against Ellipsis, I think that will be key for them. Well, that energy easier said than done. This is the fourth day. Three hard fought days of ultimate so far. So they've got to dig deep from here. They've got to find something. Because if it stays the way it's been going, GWS are going to end up in fifth. And Fuse will take home sixth, which is still an admirable achievement. But given, given where they're at, they could potentially end up with fifth. They just need to find something, then they can go home and put their feet up for the rest of the year. So Smith, just is ready. And pulls. So the second half is underway. Will it be GWS? Will it be the Brisbane Fuse? Lynn. Mortimer. We'll go underneath to Catherine Yu. And Yu, Yu with a breaking backhand. Oh, Lynn and Lee. Smith and Lee, rather. Combine and then Catherine Smith just unleashes a hammer to the far side. It dies real fast and Ellie Smith can't get there. Hudson to pick it up. Here's Jesse Lee. Wong is free. GWS are very close. They're deep in the red zone. Good opportunity to score and start their second half. Lynn. It was long. She had to do so much. And the disc never cooperated. It just slid and continued to die, getting away from Jesse, Jess Lynn. So Fuse, I get an opportunity. But they're trapped on that far sideline, the coffin corner. Oh, that is an interesting throw. It's a perfect throw, in fact. And so that gets Fuse out of the corner. Smith goes back to the middle of the field. Lee, a low one to Daria. There is going to be a call. Salnikovna Daria saying that she caught it. Looks like you saying that her perspective, it bounced. We'll see if we can listen in on the conversation. Yeah, from my perspective, it was up. Okay, sure. That's fine. There we go. So, you happy to abide by the perspective of the game advisor? So, Salonikov to Dario Hull. Tap it in. And Smith. Fuse. Still having to work this zone out. Regan goes back to Smith. Now through Tam. Out to Daria. Oh, that is too much by Tam. Can't get it to Lee, so another turnover. It's first point. There's been a couple of opportunities now for both teams. Hudson will pick it up. And GWS will work out of the diagonal stack that is favoured and was favoured by the Hills team two weekends ago in Div 2, their sister team, the older sister in Div 1, also running the similar kind of strategy. Lynn 
Wong doesn't get it, it's you. Now Wong. Oh, pressure from Lee. Getting in front of Jesse Lee. And now Smith, oh, it's a block. Yu gets her hands up and deflects the Catherine Smith Huck. GWS get it back straight away. Now Yu. Yu, oh, that's blocked as well. Thompson, it's a bit of mayhem. Daria through Lee. Confused. Probably need to take a breath now. Smith. To Thompson. Daria. Smith. In the inside of that zone. To Tam. Back to Smith. Fuse slowly inching their way. Oh, and there's the pass that goes through the cup. Potentially giving them the opportunity. Tam can't jump it in. The scuba back to Smith. The pass in the middle. There it is. That's the goal. It's Ellie Smith catching that one. Better by Fuse. I love that point, Daniel. How very exciting. Big blocks and intercepts and turnovers from both teams there. Both teams have done very well defensively to have that heads up about where the disc is. And back to the Lee Smith contest. That's a big contest. And then the bid by Jesse Lynn. Just trying to... The disc never cooperated there. It just took an edge and just moved away from her. Some days the disc does have a mind of its own. And then this point block here, see you just reading Catherine Smith, knowing that she wanted to send something long and got in the throwing lane, got her hands up. Great vision and great reaction. Zone breaking backhand by Catherine Smith to score the goal. And so Smith will stay on the field. She'll pull this one. That was a break. Mari, G, and a zone from Fuse. Bouillon goes in to Parker, Mari. Mari with a stray one. That's a turnover. Smith getting a block. She scored the last point. Smith goes fast to Shelby Thompson. Smith goes up the line hard. Smith looking to the break side of the field. She has a willingness to throw hammers. Tam. Oh, she beats her defender up the line. It was Samantha Harriman unable to track Tam and she got up the line and scored that goal. Fuse now within one. The fight back that we were asking for before half has just arrived a little bit late. It's interesting to see both Hughes and GWS putting up a zone defense, especially in these conditions. The rain's settled down. It's actually completely stopped, so it's dry and the sun's coming through. There's very little wind. Usually you want to play a zone defense when the conditions are less favorable. But it seems to be working, putting enough pressure around the disc and on the handlers to force those turns. You can't question the heart of either team at the moment. They are fighting it out as hard as they possibly can. So for the third point in a row, Catherine Smith's going to stay out there. So Shelby Thompson, they're running without rest at the moment. And Catherine Smith has launched the beauty. That is a really deep pull. GWS, can they steady things here? Madison O'Connor. O'Connor all the way around the corner. Excellent catch up high. Lynn, Lynn going to Tan Smith in the area. Tan Smith goes first. What a great block up high by the Australian rep. 
Catherine Smith is currently doing it for her team. She's willing them back into this one. A wayward one by Berenger though. Doesn't connect with McGinnis. O'Connor benefits and now Carmen. Lynn gets the reset. Collision in the middle of the field. Sylvia Wong goes down. Oh, she, she doesn't look in a good way. She quite hurt. Hopefully she's all right. It looked like a fairly innocuous bump, but she is quite hurt. I hope that she's okay. Yeah, it looks like a fuse player peeling off her offensive player to try and come in for a poach. They are going to call an injury timeout here as the teams will make their way off the field. Great concern at the moment for Sylvia Wong, who's down and not in a good way. We're going to go to some replays and we're going to talk about the match while Wong receives treatment. 8-7 the score. The game's so poised right now. Oh. It's so close. It is. I think what needs to change at the moment for GWS, they've not really come out of half. Uh, firing on all cylinders, they're struggling to really get going in this match. They are. They are. G GWS need to find a little bit more of that. I think that risk-taking, a little bit of those creative shots. They've got great throwers. They are playing a little bit conservatively on offense. And Fuse have just been able to find a spark coming out of halftime. Spark indeed. At the moment, they've, they're channeling all the amps, all the energy into this game. I wonder if Fuse's defensive aim has changed since halftime. I've noticed that a lot of the Fuse defenders are allowing the GWS offensive players to catch an easy underpass and really spending a lot of effort to block off that deep shot, the deep cutters. GWS team just huddled up at the moment, having a bit of a talk, a bit of an opportunity to have a chat. In moments like these, it's important to maintain your focus. Maintain your composure. Hughes as well having their own opportunity to have a discussion. Don't imagine there's much they need to change this. Second half has gotten off to a great start for them. That's right. Despite what I said about them allowing the undercuts, they seem to be generating the turns. They can shut down the deep threats on GWS. And exactly like you said, Daniel, they've come back firing. They've scored some more points. We're getting very close now. It's a one-point margin. I think Fuse will be pretty happy with how they've performed so far. So... Sylvia Wong is going to get carted off the field. Simon Farrow, a long time servant of the New South Wales Ultimate. Hills Ultimate at the wheel there. This interlude stretching a little bit, so. Both teams are going to have to come back out and go straight back to full pace ultimate. Interesting to see that none of them are moving around, none of them are throwing. They're just kind of relaxing, taking a bit of a moment out of the game. That's right. It's very on brand with Fuse. Daniel, at halftime, we saw them gather around in a circle and play a game of WA, which is a elimination game. I don't even know how to describe it in two sentences. Well, in, in Ultimate Frisbee, we've, our, our history is rich and long. 
The spirit game, as it was called, was often the game that, a silly game that you played at the end of a match, and WAR was always one of those. An elimination game based on rhythm, actually. So you had to uh, have a bit of rhythm, and it was always great fun playing those spirit games. We don't see them too much anymore. The sport has become serious and quite professional at this Division One level. Sylvia Wong has, she's in the cart now and she will be driven off the field. We hope that she's okay. Hughes clapping. Yeah, our best wishes to Sylvia Wong. She's smiling through the pain at the moment. She's holding her left knee. Well, GWS, they're going to have to lift. And Fuse need to maintain that pressure that they had built at the start of this second half. You hope this doesn't rattle the GW GWS team too much. See Nguyen talking in the middle of the field with Ellie Smith. Clearly the Spirit captain's having a bit of a discussion figure out the procedure and where to from here. And this is where the self-officiated nature of the game comes into play. So these two spirit captains will decide what to do from here. I imagine the disc will just stay with GWS and it'll be tapped in either on zero or, well, Wong had only just caught the disc, so I imagine it's going to stay on zero. I would imagine the Fuse player would not contest that contact or oh, foul. So Eliza Cullen, rather, talking with Nguyen. So it's effectively a timeout. They just extended the time of the timeout. Timeout's normally only lasting for a few minutes. That one went on for nearly eight. So effectively, GWS will set their offense and Fuse will then set their defense. The disc will be tapped in. Elise Pillion will be the replacement for the injured Sylvia Wong. So GWS, they'd love to score this one. It's tapped in, Pillion goes to Betty Tan. Back to Lynn. Murray, a strong cut across the field. Resets it back to Lynn. Then Lynn to Carmen. GWS playing with a little bit of width. Tan comes off the front of the stack. Tan looking for Carmen. Dominator movement. Carmen trying to draw defenders. Draws two in the end and frees up Lynn. Pillion. GWS. Oh, Pillion's going to go to Betty Tan in the back of the end zone. Superb vision by Pillion. She had a satellite hovering over the fields and she spotted Betty Tan in the back of the end zone. What a great throw by Pillion that was. And GWS actually setting up in a horizontal stack off the static star in a horo as, as it's known, as opposed to a vertical stack, which is where the players set up vertically. It's great to get some movement off a disc that is stopped. And you usually have one player who's guaranteed to be free. That throw by Pillion to the fat side of the field, the weak side of the field. Arcing it up and over the defense. That's an excellent assist. Close in on an hour played, GWS from Sydney, ahead of the Brisbane Fuse. Simpson, we haven't seen her in a little while. Bowden, out to Georgia Sullivan. Bowden, GWS, 
Can bring a bit of his own. Nice throw down to Fleming. Simpson. Simpson will open up the field all the way to Sullivan. Bowden gets up the line. Sullivan eventually goes to her. Sullivan. Simpson. And now, Wynecker. Simpson. Simpson taking a moment to have a look at the defense here. Well within her range, the striking distance of Tom Simpson. Oh, Simpson goes to ground. Bowden finds Sullivan and Fleming. Tiong on the inside. Sullivan. Sullivan goes with an outside in. Long throw across the field. That's still some 30 odd meters. Simpson. Hughes is so close to the end zone. They need to continue to be patient. High stall situation. Bowden. Oh, it can't, she can't get there. So GWS. Zygman is the one who threw it away. GWS setting into their diagonal stack. Lynn, who's carried so much of the handling load this game for the Greater Western Sydney team. And out of the coffin corner she goes. Fuse playing downhill on the defense. GWS get out of jail though. Mortimer, Lynn, Lee's gone. Lynn's gonna reach for Jesse Lee. Lee's gonna have to do a little bit. She's over the top, it's Jesse Lee. What a grab up high. All the way down the field go GWS. Hudson provides the reset. Lee goes out straight away. Hudson decides not to go and push the pass. Lynn. Lee at the back. Dom Simpson bid. She can't get it. What a moment in this game. At the moment, GWS are doing it for Sylvia Wong. And that's their 10th. I think Fuse played right into GWS's hands there with their zone. As you saw, it actually wasn't that much pressure around the disc at all by GWS. They were happy to let the Fuse handlers work that disc through. And one strategy for zone defenses is just to let the handlers work and work and work until there's a miss throw or they drop the disc. And we did see a miss throw in the end zone there. Tom Simpson known for her insane bids. There's another one. The throw was too good to Jess Lee. The dark clouds are back. I wonder if we're going to see some rain. You can feel the temperature dropping out there. There's blue, some blue skies in that direction. And there's a big dark cloud over to the, to the uh, past the halfway line. I think based on the radar, it's coming. So Smith to Lee. Smith. To Taunton. To Taunton. A breaking throw back into the middle of the field. Smith tries to get it. Smith. Oh, that's a wild one. It's a fast one. It's caught anyway. Callow. Always the intended receiver. Thompson. Back to Callow. The one-two ball. Hughes. They're still in this match. 10-8 the score. They're not going anywhere, Daniel. I am so impressed with how Fuse continue to use the width of the field. Often it's so tempting for a team to cram that disc down one sideline, but they are managing to get some break throws in. They're managing to swing that disc. And when you open up space on the field, it opens up more opportunities for your cutters and receivers to catch the disc.
And it's all about opportunities. It's about creating them, and then it's about taking them. GWS at the moment have had the better of the trades. They're in front. Fuse still not going anywhere. They're still in this match, but as we go longer and longer, the story of the game is being written and we are running out of pages. Pat Smith, who has carried a mountain load of work. Mortimer stops the rolling pull. Hudson goes to O'Connor out of the horizontal. Mortimer, big undercut for Buku meters by Tan. And now O'Connor to Carmen. Thompson arrives. She got the memo and she's lobbed up to the party. She's brought the chips, she's brought the drinks, and she's brought the block. Shelby Thompson, who had such a big game against Ellipsis yesterday, has come up big. And this could be where the fight back truly starts for Fuse. Tam to Thompson. Smith gets a quick ball, and she's going to go with a real nice looking flat backhand. It's big. The defense can't stop the pass. And so Fuse in the hands of Berenger. Thompson to get, try and get the reset. It's Daria, Salna Kovna, Daria has opened up the score. Fuse, they get the break and bring it back to 10-9. Fantastic block from Thompson in that end zone. And nerves of steel from Barringer. She had her defender coming in real close. Her defender had a big swipe at it. She managed to bring it down. Shelby Thompson with the excellent block. So an interesting turn of events. We're going to add some four minutes and 50 seconds to the game clock due to the injury timeout. Steve Baker, head game advisor here this weekend, bringing us the information. So our game clock, not exactly accurate. We are gonna see added time. Time cap would then go at 104 minutes and 50 seconds, if my mass is correct. Sounds about right to me, Daniel. I'm sure Fuse would appreciate that extra time. Well, being the team that's down at this stage, we've still got well over 30 minutes to play, nearly 40 minutes to play in this match. Smith, who's played this game pretty much savage. She's joined on the line by Dom Simpson. That pull will hang. Oh, a monstrous rundown. Sabrina Tiong putting in the effort. Oh, and she stops the first pass and puts a lot of pressure on it. Lin will reset it to Mortimer. And out in front, Lin. There's a collision, there's a foul call. It will stay with Jess Lin. Nguyen. A bit of a messy structure at the moment. GWS still trying to settle into something. Hudson gets on the inside and turns Smith around. Hudson, Hudson going to Lynn. Lynn is gonna beat two. Oh, that's some good stuff by Jesse Lynn. My goodness, what a great game Jesse Lynn's had. I think we're seeing if ever there was a metaphor for the passing of the baton, an old veteran, a star in Hudson, throwing the assist to a shooting star, the rising star of Jess Lynn. That is beautiful poetry, Daniel. <laughs> I love that, but really, we saw Hudson, she wanted that long shot, didn't she? She had a look, the side it was not on. She saw that Lynn had gotten a step and 
was always going to to back her teammate in there. Put up a throw towards the back of the end zone and then let Jess Lynn do the worst. Hughes still looking for another break. They're going to have to hold this offensive point. 10. Pulls flat and hard. It falls. And Simpson will be the one in the middle of the field. Breaks to Sullivan. Simpson gets a reset. Simpson. Outside in, it's long, it's going to go over the shoulder, it's really well read there. Reinecker catching the goal for Fuse. I love her composure in the end zone, similar to Barringer in the end zone. You can see the experienced Frisbee players, they don't get sucked in to, by their defender when reading that disc. Their defender wants to take a few steps forward and have a swipe at the disc. The offensive players will just stand their ground. They say, no, I've read the disc. I know where it's going. It's coming straight to my hands. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to catch it. And that outside in forehand huck from Simpson. It, Samantha Harriman got caught underneath it and really couldn't find a read on the disc. And it was watched all the way by Reinecker. Eleven ten, the score. Fuse. They still need to keep giving. The equation is slowly becoming simpler and simpler. GWS need another four. Fuse need five. And Smith, who's continuing to play savage out there. Another good pull. O'Connor will catch it and go to Lynn. Just Lynn to Nguyen. Again, the offense is a little bit messy by GWS. Pillion will bail her out. Pillion will go to Carmen. Carmen has to reach. And the disc just dying in the air. Smith. O'Connor poaching off a little bit to try and get in the lane. It's kept in pretty well. Callow. Callow in the middle of the field to Smith. Oh, that's a really good grab out in front by Henderson. Daria. And she will go back and reset it to Daunton. Smith tries to get it. Catches well with the left hand. Salma Kona Daria sends her defender the wrong way and then Murray jumps in front for the poach block. The GWS defenders were swarming. Lynn. Tan, back to Lynn. Pillion's gone. Now on the underthrow. Nguyen, back to Lynn. You sense that the energy, the legs, it's all burning. Lynn's gonna go to Murray in the end zone. Oh, is this maybe the beginning of the end? Both teams out on their feet. 12-10 GWS score. That's great work by Murray there with the intercept in the middle of the field. As a defender, she would have had a good idea of where that disc is going. And we can see here on the replay she peels off her offensive player. Knows that Smith is going to throw in that lane and just comes and grabs an easy intercept. And Lynn uncorked a beauty. That's a fine vintage. Superb. 
technique on that flick. So it looks like Lynn is going to be the answer to the Brisbane Fuses. Cat Smith, she's going to play a bit of Savage Ultimate as well. And that's a good pull. Pulling game from both teams has been excellent today. Simpson. Out to that far sideline. McGuinness gets it off to Simpson. Bowden. A lot of space, trying to create an angle and an opening. Sullivan will have time to settle underneath that. And Sullivan has Dom Simpson out the back. Sullivan doesn't want it. <laughs> Just clop it. Just clop it, KJ Lingle in the face with the disc. Apologised. And... The disc is tapped in, nobody's ready. So Sullivan throws a, a looping one to the advantage of Smith, Simpson. Simpson does the same thing back the other way. Tiong into Sullivan. Yu had a slight go at that. Simpson now deciding she needs to be on this near sideline and get involved with the Frisbee. Bowden. Oh, a nice breaker. Through the middle now, Sullivan. Bowden. Has Zygmunt out there. Will use her. Simpson lurking in the area. Dom Simpson will throw the goal. Sabrina Tiong with the catch. A settling point for Fuse. They're still within one, but time continues to tick away. We can see the defensive look by GWS Blaze is looking a little different to their previous zone that they've put on. They've got a lot more pressure around the disc and they're pushing their defenders to just have a sniff in the middle of the field. Of course, if he's able to play through the pressure around the disc. It did look a little bit sketchy there for a moment. Sullivan. Caught with the disc, a high stall situation, but was good enough to get the disc out to the advantage of Simpson and the offense kept rolling. That's really the key there when you're stuck on the sideline. Always trying to get it off that sideline. Find where the space is on the field. It is beginning to rain again. A bit of a drizzle at the moment. Just to add complexity to the final stages of this match. Smith, pictured on screen there. He's had one point break and now is back on the field again. And that's a good pull. It looks like it might go out though, so whilst the distance was good, the accuracy was not. And G will get this from the middle of the field, one third the way up. Excellent camera work there by our technicians. G. Parker. Back to Pillion. G. Tan. And now the hug. It's to Parker. Thompson. Shelby Thompson. For the second time, she rules the skies. I think Fuse have just found their answer to Mandy Parker. Thompson playing the lane so well there. Gets the block, so Fuse. This is to level it up on the scoreboard. Huge moment. And Smith is immediately gonna go to Tam. What a great throw by Kat Smith. And Tam with an excellent cut. McGinnis tries to work and find it. The GWS defense gets down the field so fast though. Smith. Fuse still working. 
through McGuinness. McGuinness is going to lay one out there. Geez, is going to be the one who reads it so well, though. The years of experience of Tara G. GWS needed that block, and Tara G provided. Parker. Pillion to get the reset. GWS, Harriman. It's getting tough out there now. G, Parker cutting like a machine. Tan. Oh, this GWS offense does not stop running. Pillion with a heavy contact. Smith arriving from the back. It looks like there will be a foul call. Like I had it. I'm gonna contest it because I feel that I have my own angle as well. I'm not sure who fouled me. Would you like to ask an opinion maybe? Or you have to be well, I, I knew I had the disc and I just got smashed in the air. So we can throw it back. I'm a happy breed for this. Well, I'm not sure. Anna? Pillion's saying she had it. I'm not sure that she did. Then again, also Kat Smith arriving late. That's a really good contest. The contact going every which way. So we'll go back. G. GWS. Still with the disc. Harriman. Parker. Parker with a quick movement. Tan, Tan's gonna unleash a hammer. Oh, it's dying away at double helixes. <laughs> the pressure at the moment. A bit of a braided fade by Betty Tan, who's thrown a hammer when she didn't need to. It gives Fuse another opportunity. Nobody moving down the field. Smith. The cut, the deep cut is there. Callow goes, and Smith has sent one. What a throw by Smith. Callow gets bumped on the mark by G. McGinnis. Fuse. Fuse to level it up. Oh, they've done it. They're so back in this game at the moment. It is well and truly on. It's a game to three. Wow. Daniel Fuse just do not give up. And props to Kat Smith, who has been playing like a machine. While technically not a captain by title, she is displaying exemplary leadership, servant leadership skills by serving her team and running so hard for her team right now. That hammer by Betty Tan. The GW offense was working, like they just needed to be patient. They were gonna score down there. They just had to puzzle out the defense. Instead, Tan decides to put it on her shoulders, try and make the play. Beringer, the goal scorer. She gives it the spike. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. I think it's one of the most accurate kick spikes I've seen all weekend, Daniel. She, she watched it onto the boot, watched it all the way onto the laces. That equation that I spoke about earlier becoming simpler. It's first to 15, effectively, we're at nil all and it's a game to three. Or we're 12 all and it's game to 15, however you want to look at it. It is so close, nothing to separate these two teams at the moment. Hudson goes to O'Connor, goes to Mortimer. Hudson. O'Connor. Carmen getting involved. That's a superb throw by Carmen to Lee. And now Tan. Finding the passes, Hudson. The veteran takes control, Mortimer. And there's the cut for the score. That's more of what GWS needed. A cool Carmen collected offense that smoothly cruises down the field. 
I love what you said about it being nil all, Daniel, and it's a game to three. Often I heard my coach tell me that when I was playing Frisbee. And that's really a great way to just inspire the players and to convince them to forget about their tired legs and con to convince them to forget about everything that's happened beforehand and set their sights on the future. And you know these t players will be tired. They're feeling the fatigue. They're feeling the rain. But really, what we need is three more points. So a maximum of four more points to play. And if it does go to Universe Point, wouldn't that be a fitting end to this game that has been so close throughout? GWS went down a break early and then fought it back, went up a break, took half. After half, views have been slowly fighting and clawing. Tooth and nail back into this game. That pulls out of bounds on the full, so a brick mark will be the starting position for it. Simpson jogs to it. I imagine that Simpson will probably start to play both ways for Fuse. As the game is on the line and there is no more after this. Simpson. And Lee has drawn the match up. Oh, that's straight through the hands of Sullivan off the first pass. Hughes have turned it over. That's a problem. Hudson will walk to it. Yu gives the cut across the field. Hudson instead goes to Lynn. Mortimer. Yu goes low. She drops it. And she slid to her knees. So Fuse, they get that back. Disc is tapped in, Simpson. Simpson's just gonna huck it away, it's a high stall. It will be a block, so having to work for position rather than possession. And Lynn, the MVP of this match, should GWS win. To Nguyen. And GWS will create some width. Lynn goes across the field. What a streaking cut by her. Lee is deep. Lynn's going to walk into it. She's had a travel called on her, so it's not going to matter. Lee needs to catch this. It did look like Lynn had walked into that. And it seems like McGuinness is arguing that point, that she's taken a couple of extra steps. So that's why I have called it. Um, so I missed the first half of that discussion. You saw so, you travel. Okay. I thought I was just uh, slowing. Like, because like, the distance was coming this way, so I was just trying to slow without falling. So I think they caught it there, and then he ended up there so I just think that so we'll see I this to slow down to put my mark here is getting you to be in that same place but you kept on going so that's why I'm calling a travel did you see it at all no I did not see it but it sounds like it's contested so we'll come back uh, this is one of those interesting things about travel in ultimate the rules state there's no set number of steps, just however many it takes for you to slow down, but you do need to slow down. The argument from McGuinness was that Jess Lynn had slowed down, but then kind of took another step to propel that disc all the way down the field to Lee. Arguing that she couldn't get the pressure on because of that extra step, expecting her to be in one spot, and she took an extra couple of meters. So Lynn will keep it, and they'll have to do it again, will GWS. Mortimer goes back to Lynn. Hudson attacks that disc. And now the pass around the corner through the hands of Lingle. Lee 
Mortimer. Hudson slips. Mortimer still with the disc. Still counts, gonna get high. Lynn, calm. Just gestures to the sky. And then throws the disc that's too high for Kristen Mortimer. The sky is getting darker and it is starting to turn from a drizzle to a slight mizzle. Simpson. George Artis gets up the line and Simpson with a high release flick. Attack. Attack and aggressive defense by you. Lynn claps and says what she wants. You goes out. Lynn. Mortimer. Mortimer. It's just catching an edge and moving away from her. You can tell that the energy levels are flagging both of these teams. So tired. Simpson with a gut busting cut and then throws one that's going to drop short. Lynn reads it the best. You, you gestures under, goes to the middle of the field to Nguyen. And another turn. Right now, it's a drag him out, beat him down. Bare knuckle fight between these two teams. And Dom Simpson's seen enough. She wants to have a, a breather. She wants to set up her offense. Lynn on her haunches. She's absolutely gassed. We have thoughts about the midpoint timeout right outside the end zone, but I think this is a fantastic call. As you said, Daniel, both teams are just gassed at the moment, and I don't think it would be productive for them to keep playing on their fatigued legs, and so a very smart timeout call. And it's less about strategy when it comes to a timeout call at this time. It's more about, hey, players, take a breath, rest your legs, focus. Only so much time and so many points left in this game. And only so many points left in this tournament. There is next to no time. And the rain that I've been predicting has returned. So we'll have a, a wet end to the this women's game. Fifth place is what they're playing for here. GWS up. 13-12 in this one. So Fuse will set there. Set their offense. And then GWS Blaze will set their defense. A pivotal moment. A huge moment. So a huge isolation stack. Sullivan in space at the front. She'll go to the break side. No, she'll do the circle of death. Will Georgia Sullivan? That is atrocious. She somehow ran in a big circle and then caught the goal. And that is going to level it back up at 13s. The circle of death has worked, Daniel. Normally in Ultimate, you teach players to cut up and down, go vertical, and she's done a giant U-turn. It wasn't pretty, but do you know what? It did the trick. It's got a score on the scoreboard. Banana cuts is also uh, what we like to call the circle of death. Well, that wasn't just a banana cut. as some of the heads of state athletes carrying their live spirit scoreboard and their vuvuzelas. Think of note, the temperature is currently dropping. It's getting cold down here. And there's blue skies beyond. So I think we're going to have the rain for a little bit yet and then probably go back to finer conditions. Smith had a bit of a breather. Yes. 
How will this end? Will it be a big play? Will it be Jess Lynn and Jess Lee? Will it be Hughes for the first time in three years back in the national championships? Murray goes to Parker. 10 gets under and then G is the one who catches that. The pass low and hard to Lee and then Pillion can't catch it. Is this the most perfectly timed comeback we have ever seen? To score their 14th here. This could be the beginning of a fifth place result. Cass Smith, power position. Sound of curve, Nadaria makes the cut deep. Tam, the reset. Simpson, who's come across the D-line. Simpson, Simpson to the end zone. Oh, it's a big block by Betty Tan. Tan, just when GWS needed it, she provides. Eliza Cullen having to do a lot there. Tan read the disc the best, pursued and had a great angle on it. G. Oh, it's going to go low and off the hands. Murray is not happy. Harriman couldn't catch that. Smith gestures that she wants her players closer. They go out of the diag. Fuse, they're static down the field. And Cat Smith is going to just send it to Dom Simpson. I think she had a hand on it. I think she touched that as it went past. Perhaps the wet Frisbee just sliding through the fingers of Dom Simpson, who had the opportunity to score the 14th point for the Fuse. And so G to Pillion. Harriman drops it again. She's had two drops. Smith, Smith goes fast. It's too low, too high. Oh, the pressure is building. And it's telling on both teams at the moment. First GWS give it to Fuse, and then Fuse give it right back. All Smith had to do was throw a catchable pass, and that was not catchable. G, Tan finding an acre of space. Back to G, Pillion. Murray is all kinds of free. There is a pick call on the stack, and that would be why. So the disc gets tapped in, Pillion. We'll go to Murray. Oh, geez, covered well by Simpson. And there's the pressure, the defensive pressure is enough. Hughes get the block and the turn. Smith picks it up and wants to go fast. Smith, the short one. And then Smith again. Cat Smith to the end zone. There's a player, all kinds of free. Cues are up. That's right, with two teams putting on a lot of defensive pressure. And two teams both seeming to struggle with the sudden rain that's come down. Cues with Cat Smith's help. And the Manage pressure. Him. See, Harriman had the two drops. It nearly didn't matter, and then it did. And Fuse. They need one more just one more goal you're done you can go home you can have a bath you can turn on some candles and you can listen to that sweet victory music a great grab by cat smith amongst a lot of gws players gabby callow Catching the goal. At the end of the day, it's desire and work rate. Callow had 
Just run hard enough that Tara G couldn't catch her. And so time cap doesn't matter. The rain doesn't matter. The pain doesn't matter. The only thing that matters, Fuse need one more. GWS need two. There's still hope yet. Will it be a power outage? Will the fuse blow or will it be Brisbane who wins this game? O'Connor. Parker goes back to O'Connor. Tan is streaming free deep. O'Connor. Sal Nico Nadaria comes off to get the block. Is this it? It will be Tam to pick it up. Kat Smith will provide the reset. Smith goes up the line. The poach is there from Lynn. Smith over the top. Lynn gets that one. No call. Oh, universe point game would be just delightful. Hudson, oh, that is not going to go the way of O'Connor. Fleming got a tip on it. It deflected just out of the reach of O'Connor. So Serena Tam to pick it up. She breaks on the inside to Daria. Daria looks, gestures under. Smith sets up. And then Daria, she's going to throw it to the end zone. Fuse have done it. They come fifth. Oh, what a thrilling finish. You feel for GWS. They have lost here, but full credit to the Brisbane, Brisbane Fuse. That is nothing but one of the gutsiest wins you will ever see. I love that they maintained a big game throughout despite the challenging conditions. Well, I am exhausted. I didn't even play. These players have played four hard days. The results are in. Brisbane Fuse come fifth. GWS Blaze come sixth. And that was a great match. An absolute treat. Amy Chang, any closing thoughts before we throw to a break? Well, we thought GWS had this game in the first half, but with Fuse coming out firing in the second half, I want to know what Anson Chung, coach and the leadership team of Fuse, have sprinkled on their players because they just did amazing to come back in this match and take the win. It turns out it's a rainbow and sunshine for the Brisbane Fuse. The multicolored umbrella of Anson Chan has manifested a victory for his team. They finish on a high. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for this match. We'll be back very shortly with the men's, or the Open's finals. We'll have Thunder Slice playing Ellipsis. We look forward to seeing you then. <laughs>